with it, like game AAA titles like Tears of the Kingdom, I do actually think they did a good job because they has almost essentially tripled their uh, their map size. They almost tripled what you could do in that game, which was interesting. But I do think it doesn't get much bigger than that. As you mentioned before, like you have uh, uh, Spider-Man 2, which I have thoughts about Spider-Man 2. I am not a fan. Interesting. Um, interesting. Okay. I had, I haven't played through it. Like I've played through the tutorial. I haven't. But I just watched the synopsis of it and understood what the story was and saw most of the cutscenes and I'm not a fan. But interesting, Spider-Man interesting. 1 was amazing. Anyway, that's all another topic. Yeah. Um, that that's interesting <laughs> though that you didn't like it. Um but yeah, I, okay, I have, so okay. if we could have a great Spider-Man 2 I, debate later, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe we should. Um cuz I do I do agree with you that the first game had really good storytelling. Um but so you're talking well, about so, oh, okay, wait, what do you what were you going to say? On the su- so on the subject of, like, you brought up Manhattan and stuff, uh, yes, going through, like, the entire city of Manhattan, they do have a lot of, like, reused assets. And a lot of the buildings are, like, copy and paste. But it's not like a one-to-one, every single square pixel is the exact same as Manhattan. It's a simulated Manhattan, of course. But it serves its big purpose in Spider-Man's story in that you you go to Manhattan and that's it. Right. I'm not sure if like I I think it would be hard to create something like the size of Texas as as the map simply because what reason would you have to do so? Especially well, when if you make it too big, then you might as well just make level selects. To kind of, well, no, because that, I mean, of course, there's fa- there's always fast travel in these open world games, but I I guess my because here's my my point. What kind of irks me is you mentioned that Tears of the Kingdom is like, oh, they tripled the size. They did not triple the size. Like, the, it's the same overworld with a small amount of Sky Islands, not very much at all. Like, how if you put all the Sky Islands together. How much of it, what percent of that would be the percent of the overworld? And then the, it was, there was a disappointing amount of like, how come the tutorial, the tutorial Sky Island is the like the only one that's substantial? Like, I just don't understand that. Like, I'm not counting the, the temples that are in the sky because they're a little different, but that is crazy to me. And then the underground, they just took the like the negative space in between all the rivers and made it a generic like wasteland that's dark with some plants and maybe some camps that were probably reused assets you know and it's like if you've seen one section of the underground you've seen the whole thing and i think like what i'm trying to say here because i'm not necessarily trying to rag on tears of the kingdom but i feel like a lot of these open world games suffer where it's like we're making it massive for the sake of it being massive it's not actually like full of cool things to do not every area is going to be memorable not every area is going to be fleshed out or polished it's just like a lot of it is kind of copy paste to make it feel grandiose or to just fill your time with busy work you know it's like oh it's a giant map with 1000 collectible feathers or whatever it is in the game you got to get your artifacts they're all around the world even though it's like you're just going to literally be going around for three hours of of your or more just collecting these collectibles for an achievement because they don't actually even serve a purpose or maybe if you get 20 percent of them you get the reward for all like for like the highest reward because they don't but then it's like the collectible people are going to try and get them all and then there's no reward like the korok seeds dude like they were never meant to be collected all of them were never meant to be collected but people are still going to do it um so i'm just like if you're going to make your game big is it worth making it big? But then, like, game companies have to one-up their last game. Like, triple A's have to. So they just feel like they have to make it bigger. And I'm just like, maybe we should think about this a little bit, you know? Because like, after- You know, yeah. you do, you do, not to interrupt, you do bring up a good point, though, 
in that there's a lot of games that have continued to try and one-up themselves in these big open world concepts but there are also a couple of games especially two in particular that i can think of um in the last actually just in the last year that decided to go backwards and kind of back to basics oh wait I, I wanna, and they I still kind of ended it well so they i mean at least one of them ended up still kind of making it larger than life as far as like storytelling goes and it was really cheesy but it's kind of on brand so the two games i'm mentioning well actually maybe it's just one game now that i think about it because street fighter 6 is one of the examples ah, as well yes. as yes. mortal kombat 1 Yes. Both okay. of those games the, yeah. mechanically and like through their through what they were trying to achieve, at least as their primary function of the game. Because Street Fighter Six, you I guess you can play the story. It's it's a it's a story. I don't know if it's yeah, an amazing story. I hear it's, it's like a it's story. I, I mean I've seen some gameplay of it and it it looks kinda like cheesy and kinda funny and cool, but also like I don't know. I can definitely see why it's a big five's campaign for a lot of people. or anything. Wait, wait. So wait, were you talking about five's campaign or six's campaign? Fives. So five's oh, campaign. I was about the sixes. cutscenes and stuff. Well, right. If you compare five to six, six's campaign is like goofy, yes. whereas yeah. five's campaign is still has the goof in it. But man, is it cool? Is it full of fun, interesting, almost like Avengers style? storytelling where it's like all these fighters from all these different realms are clashing in all these different ways and the overarching plot is they end up in the same spot as fighting the final boss anyway so street fighter 6 kind of you play it sort of for the story but really you play it as a fighting game as a game itself it really decided to go back to the basics it added a couple of new mechanics but realistically, the the cast that it came out with was like the bare bones. Yes, all you needed yeah. to have a good time. And Mortal Kombat One was the same way. In fact, uh, anyone who knows Mortal Kombat lore, it's it's really dude. It's all over the. It's a rabbit hole on its own. Yeah. But basically, Mortal Kombat Eleven essentially retcons the entire universe and just like. Thanos snaps it into a new timeline. Yes. And so Mortal yeah. Kombat 1 is all about the god Liu Kang being in this new timeline. He calls it the new era. And it's it is kind of like a reboot sort of, but it's right. basically it's NetherRealm Studios recognizing that Mortal Kombat has gotten so congested. Every character has died like four times canonically and come back to life four times. You know, half of the right. main cast are zombies. The other half of the main cast should be zombies. This person is like, has Bro. gone bad to being good to being bad. They've slain Bro, gods. You're and literally... then they've slain gods, those gods. <laughs> you're literally describing Naruto right now, dude. This is crazy. Well, <laughs> so, I mean, with, with Mortal Kombat, oh like, gosh. once they got to this new era, it was, it felt so much more self contained when you play through the story. And then also, Again, there's that, like, adds a couple of new mechanics, but at its core, the main roster of fighters is only 20 fighters big. And if you're talking about, like, going bigger than the last time, than the last time, that that was, like, one of the smallest launching casts. Yeah. And yet, and they, of course, they are going to have their battle passes and stuff. That is something I want to bring up, is the, I feel like half the reason that they build these games this big is so that they can make people spend an enormous amount of money for them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, with so is... much filler. And my yeah. problem with AAA titles, which might go in sort of in line with this, is that they they make or they project them to be so big that you can't even buy the full thing at launch like <laughs> and then you have to buy either yeah. the battle pass or the expansion yeah. pass or the yeah. fighters pass or I the blame skyrim this pass, skyrim that pass or the dlc skyrim yeah did Sky i have dlc yes skyrim was an open world game that blew everyone's mind because it's actually a good game i mean it, it's still bethesda with its jank but like 
but that's i mean skyrim's a good time most people you ask yeah. about skyrim will be like dude skyrim's sick it's really good and it has really substantial dlc and i mean you could say oblivion started because oblivion also had dlc and was successful at the time but like it popularized it. Skyrim definitely did. And ever since then, people have been trying to capture that magic of like, my game is massive. But it's like, I don't know, man. It's because what you're saying See, the is, problem... is great. Yeah. Like people go back to the basics and they're having to because it's, it's impossible to one up yourself, right? You can't one up Breath of the Wild. You know, like I don't think Tears of the Kingdom, in, not, in my opinion, successfully one up to Breath of the Wild. I mean, because think about it. Going from Skyward Sword to Breath of the Wild, that is huge jump. But going from Breath of the Wild to Tears of the Kingdom does not feel that substantial, right? It does feel like a sequel to uh, Breath of the Wild. Like, it feels like a, uh, a good, like, advancement from the last game. Like, there's progress, and, you know, you're, you're back in the world, and there's changes and everything. But, like, it's like, if you're trying to make a world bigger than Breath of the Wild, like, that's nuts. And GTA is going to be big and nuts. And Red Dead Redemption 2 and whatever, right? Like, all these games are so massive. And I think that they need to scale back. I think you're absolutely right. Like, Elden Ring is one of the best examples of, like, a big game that is polished and has substance everywhere, right? Like, I feel like when I, in that game, I remember every location. All the bosses are memorable. All the optional content is super good. Like, at least in my opinion, right? I don't know how you feel about Elden Ring, but... I'm I'm scared for from software because do they are they gonna have to make a game that's bigger than Elden Ring? Because I don't know if they should. Like after this, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, um. Well, wasn't there a game? Was it No Man's Sky or something like that? No I never Man's got Sky. to play it, but it was supposedly this infinitely spanning yes. universe of infinitely spanning planets, yes. and the map was infinite. Yeah, that's crazy to me. That's like on a on a scale hitherto undreamt of you know like there's yeah. red dead redemption where you're you're going across the west and i do think there is merit for games to have big locations like that if the story warrants it red dead redemption is very um it plays well with such a wide expanse because the whole I think one of the big draws to play Red Dead Redemption is to get that kind of Western story. Yeah. To be a lone rider, to go through the forest yourself. And I admit it probably, I never got to play it because as you said, it's like a uh, 60 to 70 hour experience, you know, at the very least. At the very least, uh, yeah. I, mean, I, I can but, even throw Persona 5 in this mix, you know, like just crazy oh yeah i mean i was told my brother played persona 5 i haven't played it yet i do want to but he told me his first run through was like 200 hours yep that is how mine went too my first my first elden ring run through let's see i I, it's probably gotta be something like 90 hours i can i can check mine actually uh you know, and like I've been playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor, which this does bring up another kind of gripe I have with AAA games is they release them so big and they have all these DLCs, but nine times out of ten, they also release them unfinished. Yeah, which is like, crazy because they work on them for a long time. I mean, some of them don't, right? Like th- there was one point where Assassin's Creed was being released every year. It's like that's not okay, <laughs> but. Um, right, but, but like, yeah. so Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a big thing. Yes, I will say Star Wars Jedi Survivor, great. Excuse me, great game, great story, surprisingly good story. There's only like one or two gripes I have with the story. Otherwise, great game, great world, great stuff. Holy crap, is it janky? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, yep. And, and I I did see a lot of the footage when that game came out, and it was pretty much like uh, the EA released this unfinished game, and so people are spending sixty to eighty dollars on this thing, whether you get the primo version to get the extra costume or you know any of that stuff. Regardless of that, aside from that, there's so many bugs and so many graphical errors, or like 
at one point Cal Kestis's hair was like clipping through his forehead. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's and not good. You know, I feel it was like, super yeah. weird. Or like yeah. even me playing Jedi Survivor, which I played it I played it eight months after it came out, because it came out around April and I played it in December. Yeah. And okay. it's still like I it's had eight months of live service and I walked up to an NPC and his like shirt just clipped off and he's just this T posing figure yeah, of face yep. and arms and legs. Yep. And it's like that never happened before. Yeah. Oh, You'd never see that. Well, cause here's the, pro like, I think the, the root problem, cause part of this is just me. I realize that this is just me being salty. Cause I grew up and games were released two to three years apart. You wouldn't have to wait that long for a new development in your series. Sometimes you only have to wait a couple of years. Like, you know, it's crazy to me that, you know, Smash Brothers went from having like one year in between 64 and Melee to having like eight years in between Melee and Brawl, which is like nuts. And then like Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2 Wasn't came it out like... right next to each other. And it, you, just, you didn't have to wait that long. Like Wind Waker and uh, Twilight Princess were on the same system. They were both released on the GameCube. You know, Majora's Mask and Ark of Time yeah, were both released on the N64. You know, and then it's like, oh, we only get one game on the Wii, you know, technically Twilight Princess was on the Wii, but kind of not. And then, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just, the thing I'm bummed about is because people spend all these years on these games. They spend upwards of a decade on these games and they're fantastic most of the time. You know, I, you know, there are the exceptions that are just like, you're just trying to get people to give you money. Like you're, like you're making a cash grab of a game that's just full of filler. But there are a bunch of really big games that are really good. And it takes time to make these games. It takes years and years and years to make these games. And it just sucks because it's like, we're going to have to wait just as long, if not longer, for the next one. And the, like, yeah, I, I, really, I do agree. Yeah. Like, I, they, like, yeah. They should not be trying to make the games bigger than the last. Even though it's like, on, 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 a, on, a, on the paper and everything, it's like, of course you want to make your game bigger. Of course you want to do it bigger and better than last time. But I'm like, people, there, there's a line that's coming up. And it's like, we got we to gotta do something. We got to change the way we make games. Because I've heard horror stories about developers and just how much work they're having to do on these giant games. You know, and you're just a cog in the machine or whatever it is. And like, maybe we should scale hey, it back. You want, you want people, you want a horror story. Maybe we should cover this at some point because it is kind of like a cautionary tale of going too big is overwatch 2 yeah well I, uh, dude, there's so much around that though holy because i feel like a lot of it wasn't even about the game like i'm sure a lot of it was but i mean the company in and of itself was like imploding there was there was some issues with the co company but the game is itself they what they advertised originally and what they actually came up with and what they've have delivered thus far, even though the game's been in service for two years, it's like not even comp you can't even fathom the difference of what they said they were making and then what they actually made yeah. is so far apart yeah. from each yeah. other. And it's because they were so ambitious with what it was. That's a whole nother rabbit hole, but I do agree that but... I do think AAA companies uh, need, they need to kind of, I do think they kind of need to remember the fundamentals yeah. of what made their game so interesting in the first place. I think what you're kind of saying here is that the open world grandiose like world beyond your reckoning kind of thing is going to start to go from something cool to like a trend almost. Well, it's, it's just going to fade away as fast as it showed up. Well, that's why I'm worried about it is because again, a lot of these games are fantastic and that people, everyone plays them because it's like, yeah, I spent almost 10 years on this game. Of course it's going to be like worth playing, but it's just like I, I think about it from a developer side and I'm like, I I don't wanna play the next Zelda game. Think about this. I don't wanna play the next Zelda game when I'm thirty five. Like, come on. <laughs> if 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 the de development cycles 
keep getting longer and longer, I, I might have to wait that long for the next Zelda game. And it might not be a Zelda game I want to play. Because yeah. I'm not actually a fan of the way Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild are structured. I'm not saying that they're bad games at all. Like, I'm, I'm sure, like, there, there are so many people that play them. They're honestly the most played Zelda games of all time. It's like, that's actually a fact, right? So it's obviously a good thing for the masses. Like, people love it. But as a Zelda fan from way back, I wasn't a huge fan of it. And it just, it just hurts me so bad to be like, oh, the sequel to Elden Ring? Like, I might have to wait seven plus years i might have to wait seven plus years for the next zelda i might have to wait seven plus years for the next you know fill in the blank i that waited just makes me sad. a good it makes me so sad 15 years for kingdom hearts 3 oh geez bro hey but at least 15, at least there like, were games in between literally a decade and a half for one game but it's like we're not at this point we're not even sure in but they were games. like they were like, bro, I'm just hungry for, yeah. for some I gaming. Mean, Kingdom Hearts 3, when did that come out? It came out like, what? Uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 ago? came out in 2019. Really? 2019? I guess you're right. No, no. No, it was like 2021, 20, yeah. maybe? I feel like it, it, it's... Yeah, 2019. Relic. No way. Dude, that's crazy to me. Um... But yeah, I know what you it mean. It released January 25th, 2019. But there were games in between, right? Because, you know, I feel like there's a lot of other series where you don't get anything in between. Like, at least we were getting, you know, 358 e over 2. And we were getting Dream Drop Distance and, you know, Birth by Sleep and all that. So. Yes, and something interesting to think about, though, is I do... Well, I do love those games. Roxas, one of my favorite characters of all time. I love Roxas. Yes. However, it does. Those are those games are just filler, or like sort of. To me, I don't think three five eight over it's two tough, is filler though, because it's like I, in I don't order think to filler. I think Dream Drop is the most fillery. I would to say. understand. Okay, I can I can accept that, but like. Uh, because it's three, five, eight over two days is kind of like a companion story. It's kind of like the underlayer of Kingdom Hearts two. Yeah, but without it, I I don't uh, think I would like to as much, and I don't think I like, would like Roxas as much. Or like I love Axel. Like there's so many things about Kingdom Hearts two that I did not appreciate until I played it. So I feel like it's almost like the backstory Kingdom Hearts two needed to kind of make you actually appreciate the tutorial that everybody rags on, you know? So I don't know. I feel like it's more important than you're giving it credit for, but it does, it does bring up this thing though, that you mentioned with kingdom hearts three, it came out in 2019. We've, we've already been waiting five years for kingdom hearts four and yes, we've but... had one trailer. Okay. So there, there and is... it was not even just like, a trailer it was like kind of sort of a trailer there's something to be said about it though because the guy who works on it doesn't just do kingdom hearts so he for, i think the main reason why kingdom Hearts 3 took so long is because the because the, i you know i think dream drop uh, and birth by sleep and 358 weren't done by the main guy like i think he oversaw the projects but um he was probably working on because you know he also does final fantasy 7 and uh, a bunch of other stuff i i don't know off the top of my head um but it's like i think he was working on final fantasy 7 remake and then he went to three after or something like that or maybe he was doing both at the same time but he was spreading himself pretty thin i feel like which is one of the reasons why it took so long because that's the weird thing is some games aren't in development the whole time but some games are um like i think i genuinely think breath of the wild was in development since skyward sword ended but i like there are some games that don't actually start development until later like brawl i don't think was in development right after melee i think there was a couple year gap and then they started making brawl um so it's it is interesting how that works um you know because it's not always one-to-one -one like that so there's like a teams and b teams yeah and games but and... i mean all i'm saying is how long is it going to take before Kingdom Hearts 4 comes out, you know? Am I going to be a decade older 
like I was with two. Hopefully you know? not. Anyway, hopefully not, because we we are entering the era where portable gaming is like kind of going away, because the Switch is portable and on TV, and then there's like the Steam Deck and stuff. So I think we're mo we're moving away from that separation, which allows developers to make those big budget games all the time. So like every single Kingdom Hearts should be a mainline Kingdom Hearts now in terms of quality, because I don't think they're going to be doing portable versions anymore same with like monster hunter and same with you know zelda like i, I think they're just they're done doing these smaller projects on because that's that that's what was passable about it you know you'd have they would release the big game and then while you're waiting for the next big game they would release the smaller games on like the ds and the, uh, the psp and stuff but now we don't even get that because <laughs> they're one of the same uh but yeah anyways that's yeah, I just wanted to talk about that. <laughs> it's I, I'm concerned about it, but I'm also just salty because I want my games. I'm a angry customer. Yeah, I can I can concur. <laughs> I I want I just want the stories to come at a reasonable time, you know. Yeah. But anyways, um, I think our next train is here. <laughs> yeah.